My father had gone back to Puerto Rico many years before, and it was my mother and my kid brother and sister and myself. And uh, at 17, I joined the Army and got out. I eventually went and got stationed in Munich, Germany. Funny thing is, in Germany, I uh, discovered, I heard Dizzy Gillespie and Channel, <coughs> Channel Posa for the first time together. And just the, the music of, uh, of my culture, hearing the conga, and hearing jazz, which is another art form that I loved. And I see them come together, that was, became my inspiration. So I came back home. I was not quite 20 when I came back home. And, uh, and Birdland had just opened up in Manhattan, so I told mom, I'm not, I'm not coming home. I'm gonna go find a place to live near Birdland, because that's where Dizzy and Charlie Parker and, and Bud Powell and all the jazz greats were, and I wanted to be near them. When I came out, I, Chano Pozo changed my life. Hearing him with Dizzy, uh, and there was a club when I was in the Army. The Army was still segregated, and I had gone into a white outfit. And I caught a lot of hell in the white outfit because uh, I was still a Puerto Rican from New York, and the army is quite predominantly guys from Missouri and Mississippi and Alabama. And <laughs> so I was the pepper belly from New York. That's what it and I used to. Uh, and stationed in Munich, Germany, there was a, a club called the Orlando Club, which was for black soldiers. And I don't know how I got a win wind of, of, of that place knowing that that place existed and they used to have live music there. It was a, a European musician who used to go jam with uh, black soldiers who were in the black army bands and they play jazz when they were on, on leave and stuff and go to this club to jam. So I went there and used to hang out there every moment I could. And there was an old banjo lying around. And the banjo heads are, uh, uh, the, the, the back of it is calfskin. And it was pretty old, and I ripped off all the wires, and I put the head of the banjo between my legs, and I started to bang on it, making out like Chano Posa. You know? So they, uh, they tolerated me. And they said, but you know, they heard a semblance of some promise. And they said, you know, you ought to pursue this. And uh, I befriended some European musicians who took, made me kind of like their mascot. Uh, and uh, so I used to hang out with as many musicians as I could being involved in music or listening to it or, or experiencing the life of a musician became my passion. Then when I came back and from the Army, this was still jumping because they opened a place called the Club A45, which is on the corner of Prospect Avenue on 63rd Street. And who do I hear and, and see playing there but Dizzy Miles Davis? Uh, uh, big bands like the Tiny Tiny Collins Band, who was the drummer with Woody Herman. Uh, so I'd walk right down the block on, on Monday nights, and I'd, I'd listening to the music that I had heard on records. And and around the corner, I was listening to Machito. So it, it was all coming at me in waves, you know. Uh, it was a great time uh, to uh, to be in this particular area because the, the culture was coming at you uh, in waves, you know. And I, uh, you took it for granted. You thought that was the normal way, this way things should be. It, it was far from it, as we later realized. Mm -hmm. I met Arsenio. Kike and Arsene and, and, and Raul had an apartment on Jackson Avenue. 
right down Westchester. And I used to walk there because I, somehow I met that family and they were very friendly with me. And in fact, Raul used to make drums for me. He was a, a kind of a homemade dr conga drum maker. Uh, so I used to go to their apartments and, and they used to have rumbana, jam sessions, and, and, and tongo lele, and, and, and a lot of uh, groups that were dance troops that had percussionists and stuff. I used to jam at the apartment. I was very privileged to be part of that scene and they welcomed me and uh, I kind of jammed with them a little bit but I realized that I wasn't ready to <laughs> on that lead yet, you know. They were very deep, very profound stuff going on. 